brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, city. Mark, Connor, congratulations on your new role as Brad DTC Joint Managers. How does that sound, Connor? Yeah, over the moon. Um, obviously, we've been in this position now for a couple of months, and you know things have been positive so far, and and we've really enjoyed the moment. And it's brilliant to get it um, full time and permanent as well. Mark, when did you learn that you'd be <coughs> Joint Manager of Brad DTC? Uh, at Sunday, uh, we got a call from, from Ryan to come in, um, so obviously we, we got that call, he told us the news and then we came in to discuss after that, uh, so obviously we were delighted when we got that phone call and you know the hard work that we've, we've done so far has been rewarded and just hopefully we can carry on with that, with that success really. What does it mean to you both to get this opportunity after the hard work that you've done so far? Yeah, it's it's obviously it's great for us. Um, you know, it's been a team effort from everybody involved, but we know we just need to continue that that work ethic and and you know keep keep progressing the team. Um, you know, and keep building as, as a club. Ryan, when did you feel that it was the right time to give these guys the joint manager permanently? Uh, Jim, it's been something we've been giving some thought to for some time. Um, you know, even after the exit to defeat, it didn't change anything for us. Very, very pleased with the progress the two guys were making. Um, and, you know, we've gone back to back against two of the best teams in the division. And we felt that now was to a good time to put a little bit more stability into what we're trying to achieve in the long term. And it's, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, it's a real privilege to have Mark and Connor in that picture. And we're very excited about where we go next. Until the end of next season is initially. How, initially, how long you've given these two guys to show what they can do? Why did you feel that that was the right time frame? Well, I think it gives uh, Mark and Connor security, which they deserve. Um, it allows us to uh, restructure behind them. Obviously, their jobs that they now leave behind need to be filled, uh, so we can continue to produce the stars of tomorrow, which we've continue, which we've done this season. Um, and 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 you know, it's very much an initial. 16 month contract so there is more to go um, and uh, it's, we'll see where we get but it's a deal that um, both ourselves and Mark and Connor are very comfortable with. We spoke about it at length yesterday and, uh, and here we are today all over the line and we move forward. 29, 33, 29 in front of us now. Does this show that age is just a number and that age shouldn't be a barrier to success? It's just irrelevant from our perspective, it doesn't matter if we're young, 29 or 59, what is it? It makes no difference, um, you know, it's, we've got, the three of us have got something in common, we, we were given opportunities, perhaps doubted by some people, perhaps not, and we've t we tried to take them, we've achieved nothing yet, you know, we've achieved absolutely nothing, um, this is just the start um, for us, uh, we work very closely, we've got a good team at the club, Obviously, Lee Turnbull in the mix as well, and, and, and the owner right behind us. Um, it is exciting for us at the moment, but our feet are on the ground. And, um, you know, this is probably a rare occasion that you're appointing a manager or managers in our case on the back of success. Usually, it's the other way around, and it, this becomes like a momentum lifter. For us, this is a case of um, injecting a little bit more adrenaline into what we're on with. And, uh, yeah, we'll see where we get to, but for us, the age is utterly irrelevant, it's not something we, we ever discuss. Final one from me, I'll ask you both this question. Firstly Mark, we've asked you repeatedly, whilst you've been in caretaker and an interim charge, whether you wanted the position, you've been very diplomatic in your answer, but really, when did you realise that you wanted this position? It's something that we've obviously been working hard towards, you know, since starting our coaching careers, so, you know, having success early on, um, you know, we started to get, get a taste for it in a way, and, the players started to really buy into myself and Connor's plans, and you know, obviously, probably after the Greensby game, we were, you know, we saw that it's something that we we can do and we can hopefully have success in. So yeah, it was around that time, but you know, we just had to keep keep proving people right and and keep keep working as hard as we've been doing. And you know, today was well the day that we we got the job. Similarly for you, Connor. Yeah, just echo that really. I think our ambitions as, as coaches is some people have different ambitions where they want to work with younger players or in a certain age group where I think longer term we felt that first team was probably something that we wanted to go into. Uh, so when we got that opportunity from Ryan, um, 
we went on, you know, we went in there comfortably to say, you know, we'll give it our best shot, and and now we've been given this opportunity permanently. That's it's been fantastic for us. Thank you. Thank you. When you came in mid December, obviously much more scared. If you looked ahead, did you ever think that you'd have been this successful this quickly? I think you know we went in there confident in in our methods and what we can do, but. You know, you're going in there a little bit blind without that experience, but for us it's been it's been brilliant because you know we've had uh, this run of games now and it's near a quarter of a season, and you know and we've and we've worked hard and we've got some really good results. So for us it's been it's been brilliant. And how does it change becoming full time managers as opposed to interim? What what will change? <coughs> Four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changes really. You know, in our approach, we've said it from from the start. You know we've got that work ethic, and you know that's that's obviously rubbing off on the players as well, and, and the coaching staff that are in the building. So, you know, nothing changes um, in terms of that. Ryan, obviously your first opportunity really at this level. How easy was the decision, given the way the season has gone since the two guys came in? Well, it was an easy decision to give them a chance in the first place. Can know what they're all about. You know the the two two of our staff that I've kept an eye on in my time at the club and they've achieved more than most have in, in, on, in, from a footballing perspective which is probably not a great thing to say to be honest but um, it's true and um, to say they've taken the chance with both hands would be an understatement and um, they've proven that not only are they able to do the job they're also able to adapt to very difficult conditions which is a transfer window, training schedules you know they've gone from putting bibs out on and a Saturday after Saturday morning at Rotherham to run in Bradford City and they've just taken to it without any issues and that's the bit I wasn't concerned about. I knew the kind of characters they had and I knew that they would approach it and take it on in the right way with no fear really and you have to have that mindset when you sat uh, joint level bottom of the league and your club facing the National League. And obviously touched on the age of it, as you said, it's, it's fairly relevant. But it does seem now that you are all of one mind. It's, we all know what's happened in the last few years at Patrick Chesley. But it does seem everyone, <coughs> to use a cliche, singing from the same hymn sheet. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're not on the same page and you've got arrows pointing in the wrong direction, it's going to end one way, isn't it? So I, I think it's if you're together and you understand it and you share the vision, that's the key part. If you share what you're trying to achieve and you genuinely believe it and you're not just going along with it, then it's, you, can be, you can be harder to beat. And if you're not sure and someone's pulling in a different direction, it usually comes unstuck. I'm not suggesting that's what's happened in the past, but I can only control what's going forward, and that's the way we'll run this club. Mark, um, the players themselves, you know, I mean, obviously the way they adapted to yourself and Connor, you must have been very pleased with that because obviously you were coming in from the academy, and you know, a lot of them probably didn't know who you were or didn't know much about it. Um, well, I, I did work a, a little bit with, with the, some of the players within the squad, so that transition for me was, was a little uh, bit easier, but you know, I, can't, I can't speak for Connor, but Connor's kind of knew the players as well around the building. A lot of them kind of have come through the academy as well, which, which helped that transition. But yeah, you know, we're delighted how the players have, I've said it before, have kind of bought into our beliefs and, and, and the key is that they're going to apply it out, out, on the, out on the field. Like she needed that from day one, didn't she? Because Connor, if you know, they've been a little bit reticent about, about you two being appointed. That's always going to hold things back, isn't it? Yeah, um, like I say, when, when Mark has, has worked with a few, and, and for us, you've got to get that respect straight away. Um, and hopefully, that's come from our work ethic and, and what we're, we're putting into Bradford City in terms of the style of play and what we're asking of the players, and knowing that they're organised and they know their roles and responsibilities. And, and we've done that, and we've had really good feedback from the players. You know, they speak regularly. You know, to us, we've got really good communications as well as, as the board and Ryan. So, um, I think everybody was in the same boat where we felt that we were all moving in a positive direction. Um, so it's been it's been good. Was that almost like stage one? Was that making sure you earned that respect, to win that respect? Because it's right away, you know, there's not going to be any sentiment. Yeah, I think you know that's a big thing in terms of the respect. Um, you've got to earn it in some way. Um, obviously, we've with us two, we've we've not had that track record of, of having success in the past at that level, so you've got to go in and impress people and, and hopefully we've done that and we've gained respect from our, from our efforts, like I said. Mark, well, um, when, when the players told this morning, when did they first, were they told yesterday or...? Yeah, they were told yesterday evening, 
Um, so, you know, they were positive, obviously, they're happy with where we're working and, you know, that nothing changed today in training, just, just carried on as normal. Well, presumably, it gives them that, you said that, yeah, stability around the club, but, you know, players Contracts are just they just signed or the contracts are up in the summer. They know that there's going to be you know, the same people in charge. Yeah, that stability is, is is good for them as well. Like you're saying, because you know it's always different when a new manager comes in. They change the way they work, and it's obviously when myself and Connor came in, we changed uh, the, the style, the, the formation, things like that. So it, obviously that stability for the players has been great. And in terms of obviously the way players treat the you both get or have you got to? With them. <laughs> yeah, well, we've had quick conversations. It was, it was something that was mentioned um, with the players, and you know, you know, we're no different. Will, you know, football is what it is. You know, that's how it is. Um, you know, we want that respect as well, um, and and they're happy to do it as well. So it was kind of a, a quick and easy conversation with the players. Yeah. And, and as you say, as Ron said about you know appointment while the team are going well as well. It, it's sort of just. Yeah, and I think, you know, ideally everybody sees that, you know, we've potentially got a, a vision that we're going to try and achieve um, and there's a good feel around the place at the minute. So, like you say, for the, for the players, I'm sure that they're on board um, for the future. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, mm. that would be great. Right, can I ask, obviously all three of you, it's not your first job at the club, how important is that sort of level of continuity in what you're trying to achieve as well? Yeah, it's a probably a good point, I'm not like that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, we're, we're from within, I guess, if you like, so we know the place. Uh, I think what we, what we really share is that we know what this place should be and can be. Uh, and that doesn't mean we've got, you know, illusions of grandeur or anything like that. We know what we can achieve. Um, but we all know where we might want to improve things and that collective effort and then you add in other people to that who share a similar opinion and it can be quite, it can be quite helpful. Um, you know, I'll make no secret of the fact that the next under 18s coach at this club will be someone who potentially could be the next Bradford City manager. We would like to have that um, internal pathway, a little bit of a backfilling not going anywhere yet, but you know what I mean? It, it, we, a little bit more structure and stability, because what, it's, what it reminds people is that you have quality within, and if people don't have opportunities in life, who, who, you know, who knows? We, we could have, this club could have lost Mark and Connor to another club and never known the true capabilities. So it's a reminder, for, I guess, for, for anybody really, that if we, you do need a shot in life, uh, can I just ask Connor as well? You're, you're obviously you, you're both young, you're inexperienced managers, but you're not inexperienced coaches particularly. You've got a good few years behind you. How important was that in terms of your confidence when you when you first took over? Yeah, and it's it's something that you know does get brought up. I think sometimes you've got to ask yourself, you know, what's the quality of your experience? You know, instead of the the years. And um, so you know, like I said, we've started our coaching journey, you know, a long time ago when we were a lot younger. Um, and we've been able to, to try out our uh, methods and, and, through, and through our coaching career, just keep on developing and getting better. And, and we find ourselves in this position. And you know, what we'll do is have that passion and drive to, to make sure that we're all a success. And, and just, just to mark, I mean, you were very well backed by Ryan in, in January. I mean, what, what did that mean to you at the time? And were you always confident that you, know, you would get the opportunity here if you did well as uh, caretakers and interviews? Yeah, like you said, we're from within the club, so we've got the best intentions for the club. So, you know, when we're in January, we're speaking about the, the players that could uh, hopefully improve the squad. You know, that's that's when we started to think that this could be a long term thing for, for us. Um, so, yeah, you know, in the January window was, was positive for us, bringing them players in, and then, you know, it's for us now, it's just keep building on that. And, and really, for, for anyone who wants to answer, there's a, there's a lot of talk about you know the ethos around the club and sort of getting back to the, you know a certain way of doing things. Could you just sort of outline what what that ethos is and, 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 and what the vision is? I don't I don't think you can talk about getting back to what we were. You know I think that's the thing. We're very proud of what this club's achieved, but we can't you can't necessarily replicate it. So you're inspired by it. You know you look at that and you say that's the benchmark. 
and it's how you get there. And for us, it comes down to, you know, recruitment has been an issue for the club for a few years. There is a clear strategy of how we will recruit going forward. Uh, you know, we've got some real exciting talents in the building. And then it's a case of how we grow the club. There'll be further appointments off the field to do that. We will restructure the football department in the summer somewhat to give us the very best chance of always being at the right end of the results. Um, I guess not allowing ourselves to drift and, and leaving no stone unturned without trying to get into all the buzzwords. That is basically how the basics. You know, have you, have you done everything you can to give yourself the best chance of success? And if you can't answer that question, then you haven't. So um, the vision's pretty clear. We're not going to blow the budgets. We're going we're gonna to run this place in a sustainable way. Mark and Connor are aware of that. Lee Turnbull's aware of it. But we, we want to do that, and it will make any success we do have a lot sweeter uh, when we're not putting the future of the club at risk, as previously others may have. And, and Connor, does this, does this appointment, have you been able to think much about, for example, the summer of the summer recruitment at this stage? Does, does, does just having this certainty help in that regard? Yeah, I think as a, as a club and, and with the recruitment department and how we've been working, we've been identifying players whilst we've been, you know, having games, and that's how football clubs are run. Um, you know, and, and for us, we're excited, and having that stability does help us recruit in the summer. Yes. And, and, and Mark, what, what's your sort of um, vision of, of how the team will play going forward? We've obviously seen you make significant changes so far. <coughs> what, what should a Bradford team under yourself and Connor look like? Yeah, well, you know, we've, we've shown it, I think, already that, you know, we're ready to, to fight and compete every game um, and be hard to beat, but also showing the qualities in possession of the ball, you know, and that's that's what the fans want to see. That's how me and uh, Connor want, want, you know, the team to play. So, you know, more of that, really, you know, just keep keep showing that fighting spirit, but also just having quality alongside it. Brought to you by DIS, keeping companies connected with cloud-based solutions. Come on, City!